Let's talk about copper. Copper is mainly found in its oxidized form, intermixed with other elements in copper-based minerals. One example of these copper-based minerals is malachite. It is a green copper carbonate-based mineral that is uh, fibrous in nature, as you can see. This is a, this is a specimen from the Congo. You can see the uh, fibers and generally this would have been used in um in historically it would have been used it would have been ground up and smelted into copper another example of a copper based carbonate mineral is azurite this is another example of uh, a copper based mineral um i don't know if it was but i i it might have been used in uh, coloring, if I remember correctly, but it is another copper-based mineral. Sometimes, however, you can find copper in its pure state. This is known as native copper. That was one example, and here's another example. This one has a lot of the oxidization removed, and as you can see, is quite coppery in color and it has a very nice crystal structure. Now, when compared to um, copper-based minerals, native copper is actually quite rare, comparatively. There are, however, certain places in the world where native copper can be found in abundance. One such example, or place, I should say, is the Kiwana Peninsula in Michigan. This uh, copper nugget specimen came from there. Interestingly enough, there was so much native copper in northern Michigan that there were cultural complexes of Native Americans that mined the area and created copper tools as far back as around 10,000 years. This makes these cultures some of the oldest proven copper-using cultures in the world. In the area of the Western Great Lakes region, in the Archaic period, a cultural complex known as the Old Copper Complex existed. It started around the Middle Archaic period, around 6,000 years ago, and ended at the end of the Late Archaic period, around 3,000 years ago. Of course, this complex was not homogenous. Over the years, there is evidence that changes occurred in the beginning, when this complex started, what is found in the archaeological records is that a majority of the copper used was used to create um, utilitarian tools. But as the cultural complex neared its end, um, the utilitarian tools started disappearing from the archaeological record and more and more ornamental copper ornamental um, items started showing up and basically the end of the old copper complex marks the period where they no longer created utilitarian copper tools. The main reasons behind this decline seems to be a the copper tools that were created were relatively on the same level as the stone tools the culture used. So there was no reason to use copper over their nap tools. It did not provide them a edge, so to say. And the second reason being due to societal changes in the culture. Now, some of the more historically astute folks might be asking, well, why didn't, did, did this culture never discover how to make bronze? Which is a good question. Because in other areas of the world, um, when copper was discovered, bronze was discovered um, relatively quickly after, if we're speaking in terms of the whole human history. Well, this goes back to the, the fact that a majority of the people who discovered copper discovered it in its mineral base form, which meant they actually had to crush it and smelt it before they could actually get any usable copper. Whereas with the native cultures around the Great Lakes, the copper was in its native form, so its pure form. 
And so it was just readily available when mined. They could just already start working it and um, turning it into tools right after they mined it. They did not have to smelt it down. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that they didn't use fire in the process of creating their tools. They did, actually. Um, they would basically forge their copper tools instead of smelting them, um, which meant that the fires that they used, they, they never got them hot enough to where they would be able to smelt copper. However, they used the fires instead to forge their copper and basically do a process known as annealing, where it reduces the brittleness of their copper tools. A uh, quick aside or update, I guess, while I was um, editing this uh, video for or copper, um, news came out that they actually found some uh, copper artifacts recently in New York, which is, is kind of new because um, people didn't really think that copper got that far when it was traded, even... Um, like, like, as I mentioned before, even when after the old copper complex um, ceased to exist, copper was still being traded. It was just being traded ornamentally. A lot of this copper seems to show up in, like, um, southern Ontario and Ohio and kind of the Great, the Great Lakes regions closer to um, Mich the Michigan area, closer to the Kiwana Peninsula. But they didn't realize that copper was traded as far as New York. So that's a new revelation. And I'll even um, link the article to, to this new discovery in the description below. So that you guys, those who are interested, can read. And I don't know if I mentioned this before already in the video. But I will also be leaving uh, links to other articles that I discovered um, that I used as sources to gather my information for this video. So I thought before ending this video and saying my goodbyes, I'd show some more um, mineral specimens that I have in my collection that are have some relation to copper. Or a, a, they have copper in them basically and are kind of considered, not all of them, but some of them are considered uh, copper ores. For example, we'll just start from left to right. Here's a lovely piece of Scottish chrysocolla, which is a which has been known as a copper-based ore, or that's a term that's used often with, when talking about chrysocolla. I believe I'm saying the right one. I often get chrysocolla and chryso chrysoprase mixed up, but I believe this is chrysocolla, which would be like a copper-based mineral. You can kind of see why. Uh, kind of an in with copper it seems like there's a couple color a uh, copper based minerals there are a couple colors that copper really uh, these minerals are found in it's generally blues or greens and then shades between um here's some more malachite uh, i believe this is a con a specimen from the congo it's a nice little um malachite specimen I've shown this one before in previous videos. This is actually a pseudomorph of a copper base mineral that has replaced another copper base mineral. So it's a it's a fascinating little specimen. Of course, there's the native copper that I've been showing off. There's the malachite that I've shown off before. Here's another interesting copper um, specimen. Um, this one is, uh, or copper base specimen. This one is... You can see here, there's still one left. There's at, These are azurite stars that have been covered up by malachite. So you can see that there's one that's still uncovered, that blue star up there. And then the rest have been covered up by this malachite. Um, and it looks like some of them have even been replaced. So you could call these pseudomorphs as well. So this is a, a little fascinating specimen. I believe this one comes out of Morocco as well. Uh, to th This one's also a Morocco specimen. Now we got something like turquoise, which is often used as a gemstone to make cabochons. I believe this might be an American turquoise. It's it doesn't. This was a. I bought this off of a, off of a vendor who had just gotten his hands on some really old specimens from an old seller who just had a bunch of specimens left over from his selling days in like I think the 80s or 70s even. So these are like old specimens, but this is a nice little specimen of turquoise. I just like the 
the patterns and the mix of the colors and stuff. Uh, this is another mineral that carries copper in it. Then we've got another Criscola sample, uh, specimen, but this one's from Arizona. Likewise with this guy actually in the back, this is Air, uh, this is Chrysocola and I, I'm almost 100% sure it's from Arizona or it resembles some stuff that's very similar. And of course there's this natural native copper nugget that I've shown before and then this guy in the middle, another specimen of native copper. So I ho hope you guys enjoyed this. And we have reached the end of this video. I hope the uh, rock hounds learned something about the historical importance of copper and I hope for the more historically um, minded folks that you learned some interesting geological facts about copper and that might actually give you some interesting insights to why certain cultures created copper and why certain cultures um, couldn't create copper. Um, if you like this video please like it and if you haven't subscribed I would appreciate you subscribing. Have a good day, folks.